Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of Mastering Diagnostics with me, Brandon Steckler, technical editor of Motor Age Magazine. First, I want to give a special thanks to Bosch Diagnostics for loaning me the scan tool, the ADS-525X. This is the scan tool we're going to be featuring in this video. We're on video number three in the series, and this one is going to be based around volumetric efficiency. Now, in the past, when I was younger and didn't know as much as I do now, I always thought it was like magic when I watched some of the senior technicians in the shop making their way, troubleshooting their way through a diagnosis to ultimately come to find what the problem is. And it never seemed to take a very long time. Uh, but when I tried, it always seemed to take forever if my diagnosis was even correct in the first place. But I realized most of my problem was the fact that I didn't really have a game plan set. So I want you to think about something. When you're experiencing a drivability concern, let's consider three possible fault areas that concern may be related to. We're either dealing with a problem with ignition, either the ignition discharge isn't occurring at all, or it's occurring insufficiently or maybe even at the wrong time. And then we have a fuel delivery issue or an air fuel ratio issue, if you will. And again, either the fuel delivery is insufficient, not happening at all, or happening at the wrong time. And last but not least, we could be dealing with an engine mechanical issue, whether it's the entire bank of the engine or maybe one specific cylinder or perhaps the whole engine overall, like a restricted catalyst that would prevent the engine from breathing. Because the one thing we fail to keep in mind sometimes is that an engine is in fact an air pump. And if we can't get air in, then we can't get air out. And on the flip side, if we can't get air out, we can't get air in. So considering when I approach a drivability problem, now here is what I do differently than what I did in years past. In years past, I tried to fix the car. I don't try to fix the car anymore. I try to figure out what is good with the car because I could have a potential list of faults with 30 or more items on that that could cause similar symptoms. But if I can prove out in very simple format what is okay on the vehicle, what is functioning properly, it leaves a lot less items on that list for me to test. So one of the quickest things to eliminate right off the top is an engine mechanical fault. And that's what today's video is about. What we have to keep in mind is that volumetric efficiency is a calculation. And to determine how much air in engine pumps can be figured out mathematically. So with this chart that was given to me by the folks at AES Wave, comes by way of PWR training. And this chart displays volumetric efficiency. And the way the chart is laid out is displacement from left to right and engine RPM from top to bottom. So what we are trying to find out is what the engine of our subject vehicle should be pumping as far as air rate in grams per second. We have a 1.8 liter engine and we are going to be taking it up to 5,000 RPMs wide open throttle. So 1.8 falls right about here. And what you will see here at about 5,000 RPMs, we should be pumping anywhere between 59 and 79 grams per second. But this chart is written to reflect volumetric efficiency of 80%. Today's engines are capable of pumping much more than that. In fact, pressurized induction engines, ones that utilize a turbocharger and or a supercharger are capable of 300 to 400% volumetric efficiency. So for a naturally aspirated engine, I want to show you a little bit of a trick I've learned that works quite well to determine if an engine's breathing correctly. If you take the liters of displacement, in this case 1.8 and you multiply it by a value of 40 this should yield you in grams per second what your engine should be pumping at 5,000 rpms wide open throttle so if during our road test our scan data 
shows us values exceeding 72 grams per second, we can rest assured that our engine is in fact breathing correctly. So let's head out to the car now with our generic OBD2 scan tool. That's right, I said generic. This information that we seek is found on the OBD2 generic side of the scan tool. That information has to be there. The best part about that is we can find that information on virtually any OBD2 vehicle, any car out there, regardless of the scan tool we have. Well, as promised, we're at the vehicle, and today's subject vehicle is a 2007 Honda Civic with a 1.8 liter engine. We are going to drive the vehicle, and we are going to use the data described earlier in the video, mass airflow sensor signal input, and engine RPM signal to determine if this engine is indeed pumping correctly. We're going to be doing this utilizing a generic aftermarket scan tool and the data is going to be graphed out by having the data in a graphical format. We can view the data and to see how both of the PIDs, parameter identifiers, compare to one another. So again, the idea is to see is the engine breathing what it should be capable of breathing at a given RPM for its engine size. So again, we have a basic OBD2 generic scan tool. And today we are using the Bosch ADS-525X. But the scan tool itself doesn't matter. It's what the data being delivered is what counts. So rather than build this vehicle as a Honda Civic, I'm going to go in here as a generic OBD2. And once the data on the screen populates, we have a couple of different options. We're going to select data stream. Now, as you can see here, our scan tool screen populates with dozens and dozens of PIDs. And this is all well and good because it gives me abundance of information to look at if I desire to. But keep in mind, a scan tool communicates with the vehicle. And every time you are requesting a piece of data, that data takes time to acquire. So to aid in our diagnostic abilities, I am going to speed the scan tool up. And we can do so by building a customized PID list, looking at only what it is I desire to see. So in this case, I'm going to choose engine RPM, and I'm going to choose mass airflow sensor signal. And that will complete our customized data list. Now this scan tool offers us a couple of different ways to view the data. So as you can see our customized list is populated the screen with only two PIDs and we are going to select a different view. If I go to expand and I can expand it even further it will populate the screen with the two PIDs in a graphical format. Mass airflow sensor is going to be graphed out in a numerical value and RPM is going to be graphed out using lines. So I'm going to start the car and you will see engine RPM and mass airflow in grams per second displayed on the screen. And to test it I'm going to tip in the throttle and see the reaction. I'm hoping you hear the engine. So what we are now going to do is allow this vehicle to acquire, inform acquire information stored in a buffer, as you can see here, a data storage tank. This allows us to drive the vehicle safely without paying mind to the scan tool so we can focus on the road and the traffic around us. After acquiring the data, we will simply pause the screen and scroll back through the data to a point where the engine RPM signal is at about 5,000 RPMs. Of course, our throttle will be held darn near wide open. And what we're going to do is look at the mass airflow grams per second value and see if it correlates with what we would expect to see when this 1.8 liter engine is operating at 5,000 RPMs wide open throttle. So what I'd like you to focus on, of course you're not here with me, but I'd like you to witness how I operate this vehicle to perform this volumetric efficiency test. Now I don't want to jam on the throttle really fast and abruptly I want to roll into the throttle and what I'm going to try to do is to gradually increase the throttle angle 
with my accelerator pedal, preventing the vehicle from upshifting to the next gear. So as you'll see, I'm idling right now, and I'm going to slowly roll into the throttle and accelerate through 5,000 RPMs. So, although the volumetric efficiency road test appears to be quite easy, and it is, it, it does take a little bit of practice to get used to rolling into the throttle rather than jamming down on the accelerator pedal and preventing that vehicle from upshifting while maintaining a wide open throttle acceleration. So, I am going to be displaying our previously captured movie of our volumetric efficiency test. This includes starting the car, allowing it to idle, and then our full throttle acceleration through 5,000 RPMs. So if I play the movie, this is where I first started the vehicle and I'm elevating the RPM. I revved it a couple of times to verify my tool was capturing the data I desired and it was functioning properly. We return to an idle in gear and I roll into the throttle, preventing an upshift through 5,000 RPMs. And then I let the vehicle come down to an idle again. So if I pause this data, we can now scroll back through. And what I'm interested in is referencing the mass airflow grams per second when my engine RPM is exhibiting 5,000 RPMs. So I'm going to scroll back through the data. Getting closer. Maybe I can go a little bit, a little bit more. Just shy of 5,000 RPMs. Now, if you recall, the data from our volumetric efficiency sheet had us reference the displacement. The displacement of this engine is 1.8 liters. Again, multiplied by 40 should yield us what we should expect to see at 5,000 RPMs. We should expect to see at least 72 grams per second. We are demonstrating 70, over 79 grams per second, indicating that our engine is in fact breathing correctly. Well, I hope it's plain to see for you that we can make some very quick diagnostic decisions right from the driver's seat using no fancy tools at all. Just a basic OBD2 generic scan tool to gather information pertaining to how the engine is breathing. And here's the takeaway. If the engine appears to be pumping correctly, moving the amount of air it is expected to for its size, its displacement, for the engine RPM and throttle angle. What does that say about the condition of the engine? There is no way we can have a cam timing fault because that would affect the engine's breathability. It would not pump the same amount of air it should. We can't have a restricted catalyst or exhaust this system. We can't have a squirrel's nest in the inlet, the intake side of the, the engine, preventing it from inhaling. We can't have collapsed lifters or worn cam lobes or bent push rods. We can't have a pumping loss due to worn engine components because each and every one of those failed components would yield us an air mass amount that would be less than what was expected for the given size of the engine, engine RPM, and throttle angle. So keep that in mind next time you're approaching a drivability fault. Use the easy to grab information first as a stepping stone to determine where you have to spend your time diagnostically on the vehicle. And once you find that information quite easily, your accuracy and your efficiency will improve, ultimately giving you better confidence. So. Thanks again for joining me, Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine, and a special thanks to Bosch Diagnostics for use of their ADS 525X OBD2 generic scan tool functionality we needed for today's demonstration.
We'll see you next time. Take care.